Hello, back again to do another unboxing and review. Today we're going to be looking at a smartphone grip with active cooling that comes to us from Basius. So, as you may have guessed, this is a device meant for you to put your smartphone on or in and therefore allowing you to get a more full grip on your phone at the same time lowering your grip down away from the screen. That's what these two protrusions are for and they will settle in your hands much like a game controller from a PlayStation or an Xbox. This also has the benefit of being actively cool. And by that I mean there's a device in here that's powered that pushes air in this case, uh, in this case two fans, as opposed to passive cooling which just allows airflow, space for airflow, but it doesn't actually push it. This does using fans. Okay, this also has the benefit of having a built-in power bank of 2000 milliamps per hour and this can act as a battery backup for your phone or you can use it to charge your phone or yeah alright so now let's get into the specs it um, can hold phones with a screen size uh, between 4 inches and 6 inches it has of course two fans um, we talked about the power supply um, built into it it can take a phone with its case still on and you can put that in the holder as long as that case and phone don't exceed 11 millimeters in thickness. Um, Alright, so power in is handled through micro USB and power out, um, it has a US, full USB sized port coming out. So port power in is micro USB female, power out is USB female. Those are the ports. Alright, materials, it's made out of ABS plastic and metal net. And the metal net is the right here. So the bed that the phone will sit in is made out of metal. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look around the box here. So um, first, of, I did have the um, I brought this in, so this is imported. Um, it comes to us from China, and um, one thing immediately noticed that we do in fact have a brand. So this is not an unbranded generic. This is actually a brand over there. So um, and as you can see by the um, <laughs> labels that are premium maker so <laughs> yeah I think they're trying to say it's not cheap okay alright um, now the description here it has it as a mobile games handheld well um, that's I understand what they're trying to say but that makes it sound like it's a whole handheld console all on its own which of course it's not alright um, so USB 5 volts um, again um, alright we have the two fans down here and they said double fan to dissipate heat uh, what and the, what they're really getting at is this has two fans where others would have one. So not only is that more cooling, but it keeps the cooling even across the whole back of your phone and not just in one spot. All right, um, on the back here we can see, well, they're demonstrating it being used while playing a game, of course. You can see the grip um, I was talking about earlier. Yep, very similar to a game controller. Uh, another feature, it has a little kickstand here, so you can use it as a stand and perhaps watch a movie, so you don't necessarily have to hold it. Um, Alright, and then they're just showing you how you can use it to charge your phone, and um, yeah, okay. We also back here have some, uh, like, what is it, little QC stickers, so this evidently was QC'd and passed um, <laughs> in um, this year, 2018. It looks like the fourth month of the year. All right, and it also looks like we have a little, this must be like a little official seal. Um, it's uh, kind of shiny. It's So um, I think they're trying to say this isn't a knockoff, and this is actually an original Basius um, item. Okay, and uh, there are some other things written on the back here. You have both um, Chinese and English, so... It is in its retail package. All right, so now let's go ahead and unbox it here. It just has one little flap on the back. There was no shrink wrap around it, um, but it did have the retail hanger, as you can see here. So this is how it would come if you were at the store over there. Okay, so opening it up. Make sure I didn't leave anything in the box. Nope. All right, so on the bottom we have this. This is the micro USB cable. This is used to power um, or charge the power bank that's inside the unit. Uh, 
before we get to that, there are, okay, so here are, I guess, warranty card. It's in English and Chinese. Um, yeah, so I suppose you could send that in if you're so inclined to do. Um, also, we have some QR codes. Listen, oh. Oh, okay, so it looks like they're advertising some of their other products. All right. So let's get to the actual device here. Okay, so as stated, uh, the plastic is everything except this, which is metal. And the metal, it's pretty smooth. So, and it feels actually pretty thick. Um, so when I push in, the whole screen doesn't deform. So that's good to know. Um, feels a little more sturdy than I actually thought it would be. Um, as far as weight, it's, um, let me see. Yeah, I would say this weighs um, about as much as a smartphone, um, like a, a regular um, full-size smartphone. It has about that weight to it. Let me see. Okay, um, all right, so here we can see already through the mesh there, you see the two fans. Um, this is slides up to accommodate the different phone sizes and use a spring tension to hold it in. On the top, there, okay, on the top there is a, I guess, a grip slash cushion, um, but it's very grippy. It um, feels like a rubber with um, a lot of texture, so it kind of feels like a tire. And then on the bottom, here we have the same material, and there's three pads, one, two, I don't know if it's coming up. Yeah, you also have to take my word for it. There's a the same material that's up here is down here, here, and here to grip your phone so it doesn't slide out on the bottom. Also, um, oh, here you can see what I was talking about. See it on there? Okay. Also, um, it, these might be also spacers. So if you're, most phones have buttons on the side. So um, this gives a little space for the buttons to fall in so they're not being pushed as the phone is being compressed in order to have it hold into the device. All right, um, let's look at the bottom here. You can see where the micro USB plugs in. Uh, there's a little hole. I'm gonna assume that's an LED. And then on the back, we have, okay, so there is your um, USB out female. So you can plug in your um, charging cable to whatever device you own. And this is the button here, to I believe, to activate the fans. All right, um, there's some specs on this little kickstand. Let's go ahead and flip this kickstand down. Okay, that comes down. Oh, it's, okay, it's two parts. This is like the cover slash stand, and this is like the locking mechanism, so it doesn't collapse when you, there, see, okay. All right, um, right so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and charge it, and we'll take it from there. All right, so I've gone ahead and charged up the cooler pad. I've also brought out one of my smartphones, and I thought before we do the whole cooling um, bit, I thought we'd look at the power bank feature that's integrated into this device. So on the back here, you have the button that starts the fans, but in order to use the power bank feature, you don't have to push anything, merely just plug something into the female USB port on the back. Now, I've also brought this out. This is an inline diagnostic tool, and we'll get a real-time read of volts and amps and everything. So, um, so what we'll do here is first I'll plug in my charging cable, which I have here. So I'll plug the charging cable into the um, out portion of the diagnostic tool and I'll plug the tool into um, our cooler pad and at this point yeah, there we go so at this point we don't have any load on it it's essentially just reading the um, what's in the power bank here all right so we have five point that's refreshing so you have the 5.09 volts which makes sense for USB of course amps are zero right now because again the charge has nowhere to go. But as soon as we give it something to do, i.e. charging that phone back there, we should see the amps go up. Now keep in mind the phone is I, it's actually already fully charged, but it sh we still should get enough that we should see the amps go up. So, let's see, there you go, you can see the in the background the phone. Yeah, we'll see. Okay. 
All right. So now you can see the amps have jumped up to was at 0.30. Yep. So and that makes sense with the the phone back there being fully charged. All right. So a quick note on phone sizes, shapes, and how they work with the cooler pad here. Okay. So um, I have two of my phones here. I have my daily carry LG V20, great phone, and then I have the my HomTom HT10. All right, which is I kind of use this as like my dedicated gaming phone. All right, anyway, so um, as you can see, the LG V20 with its 5.7 inch screen is a little bit bigger than the HomTom in its 5.5 screen. Uh, that was one of the reasons I was going to use the HomTom because I thought it would fit better in there because well, it's smaller. All right. Now, it, th this does work with both size phones. However, I'm um, getting into the shape of the phones. You'll see here on my um, HT10, you see how the camera sticks out a little, not too much, but you can see that it does stick out just a little bit. Now, when I put it in there um, into the cooler pad, the camera pushes up against the mesh on the back. Now, I'm happy to report there was no damage to um, the HomTom's camera. However, I don't feel comfortable taking it on and off, on and off. I don't want to scratch the camera. So I'm going to opt to go with the V20 just because I happen to have uh, one of these slim cases on the V20, which spaces or I guess you could say protects the camera elements, which are noticeably bigger on the V20 since there's multiple cameras on here. But because of the case, it you can see it brings it flush. So I'll have a flush surface sitting against the mesh on the um, cooler grip. And I've already actually put both phones in, and as I said, both do fit in there. Um, but that might be something you want to think about if you have a phone that has a camera that sticks out the back or do not have a case for it, a slim case. But um, with this slim case that you see on the V20, it is fitting into the cooler pad. All right, so let's go ahead and um, test out the cooling feature um, and go ahead and power these fans. Now, um, I wanted to talk about charging real quick. Um, when you're charging the device, um, it'll flash, this little LED here will flash red, blue, red, blue, red, blue, red, blue. And once it's fully charged, it'll stay a steady blue. All right, now, to power the fans on, as we already discussed, you push this button in. Make sure when you push this button in, you push it in for no far enough that it um, clicks into place or like locks in the depressed position. If you don't do that, the fans will turn off pretty much as soon as you remove your finger. All right. Now, you'll know the fans are on because, of course, we're going to hear them. You will also feel them, but it, this light will also stay solid blue to let you know that the fans are running, as if you couldn't tell. All right. Okay, so push it in the button. Okay, so, um, well, it's quite apparent the fans are working and you'll feel that um, as well as hearing it um, because on my hands um, right here, I can feel the fans blowing. Um, so it's actually kind of a, a cool feature um, or bonus is that it actually seems to cool the palm, or at least the inside portion of your hands about here. Well, depending on how you're holding it, but since you're probably going to be holding it like this, it's cooling these two fingers and a little down here. So I guess that'll stop your hands from getting as sweaty. So for those intense gaming sections. Okay, so um, yeah, the fans are working. All right, so now that we've seen that the fans actually turn on and they do seem to move some air, the question is, is it gonna be enough to keep my device cool? So to answer that question, I went ahead and did a few, actually quite a few test runs. I took some temperature readings, I took that data, put it into a spreadsheet I made up and ran some calculations and got some numbers, some results. And we'll look at that as soon as I explain how I took the temperature readings. So for that, I used an infrared thermometer and I went, took uh, three readings on the back uh, for all these different conditions. I, for the back, I took a reading here, a reading here, and a reading here. And then on the front face, or the screen side, I took a measurement right there towards the top, one in dead center, and then one towards the bottom. Okay, so now let's go ahead and look at the spreadsheet. I've made a printout 
Okay. So you'll see that, here's the whole thing in its entirety, but now let's go ahead and zoom in on one of the four groupings here. So we'll start with this one. Okay, so let me get some of the point here. Okay, so you can see um, I did a before, and in each one of these groupings I'm always doing a before. So that's just me essentially taking the temperature readings before I do anything with the foam. And that will serve as my control for each little group here. Okay, so you can see that I did before I did anything, I took um, three readings on the back as I showed you earlier. And then I also did three on the screen side. So there's those three. You can see that I did. I ran an average for that face or that side of the phone. So that's the average for those three numbers there. And that's the average for those three numbers there. Then I did an overall average. So that's taking the average temp from both sides and, well, taking the average of that. And we get, so, and what is this, 82 degrees. So, um, and that's before. Now let's talk about the after. And right here, you're going to see with the condition, in this particular condition, this is no fans. So that means I had the phone in the grip, but I did not have the fans turned on. And what after means is I went ahead in each one of these uh, groupings here, I ran, I played a game on my phone for 22 minutes. And it was a rather, I would say it had decent, it's decent graphics. So I was trying to get something that would put a little strain on the phone. Anyway, and also those, um, I played matches against other players. So, and what I did that for is I try to keep each run as similar as possible, you know. So, yeah, I played different people and, you know, the, the match might have, you know, been a little more of a firefight. In one case, maybe more of a running game before. But each case, um, I'm trying to make them as similar as possible while still playing, you know, people. So, anyway, um, so 22 minutes uh, later, I took the three uh, readings again at the back, the three at the front, did the whole average deal, and we can see that. The average temp of the phone, um, at least from the outside, measured with a digi uh, th infrared thermometer, you can see it's 94.75. As where it started, it was 82. So we have a heat increase of 12.75 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, now over here, we have the same deal, but you can see this is with the fans running. Okay, so we already kind of covered this, and we can see that the, here the increase was uh, only 11.25 degrees Fahrenheit. So, coming to this, the overall heat reduction, well, using the fans as compared to not using the fans, comes up to be, that's right, a whopping 1.5 degrees Fahrenheit. So, that means running the fans will keep your uh, phone uh, 1.5 degrees cooler. Uh, yeah, kind of not what I was expecting. <laughs> I was a little disappointed by that, kind of a small number for buying this whole piece of hardware. So what did I do? I ran the whole deal again. So you can see down here, these two down here, are this, is this another set that essentially is me rerunning the top. So we have the whole shebang run once more time to get doo -doo -doo, a heat reduction of 1.17 degrees Fahrenheit. So yeah, um, I don't know about you, but this seems to be a lot to only cool, well, not even two degrees Fahrenheit. Now, be, I, I am aware that in all cases, I ran it with the foam in the cooler as opposed to doing a run where I'm just holding the foam like normal. Okay, so I'm going to give, a, there's a possibility just having it in the device and not making direct contact with the phone, you know, because you're holding this thing, right? And the only place you're really going to be touching the phone is with your thumbs. So that in of itself might have some cooling. But, I mean, let's be honest. When we put this thing in here and we hit this button and we get those fans spinning, you're thinking that's where the majority of the cooling is going to be coming from, right? I mean, well, because, I mean, to be, yeah. So... As far as the fans, no fans, I've not seen that much cooling at all. Um, so this device here might come down more to just having a grip extender, uh, keeping your hands off the foam, at least except for your thumbs. And yeah, that might be where the majority of the cooling's coming from. So then, if that's the case, the fans are just, well, they uh, cool your hands a little. I mean, as I said, I'm getting these two fingers and this little bit of my hands kind of blown on. So, 
okay. And um, the vibration um, of the fans moving is kind of soothing. <laughs> I don't know. And if you like the sound of fans as a white noise, that might be a little plus. But, I mean, all joking aside, yeah, this isn't um, doing the huge cooling job that I expected. And, I mean, I was, my expectations were realistic. I wasn't expecting it to be ice cold when I touched my phone after putting it in here. But, yeah. So, um, let's get down to, I guess, the conclusion on this. Uh, would I recommend this device? Uh, I would have to say not really. Uh, if you perhaps have bigger hands and have this little extension down here and a more game-like controller feel, makes you uh, have your gaming experience better, well, then that might be the majority of the reason you're going to be buying this. Um, or if you <laughs> want to cool little stealth bomber looking uh, phone stand, you know, oh, okay, yeah, so, <laughs> but yeah, um, as far as the cooling, it didn't do what I was kind of expecting, and so for that, I have to say, eh, I wouldn't really recommend this. It does look cool, though, I'll give it that. 